Hey everybody, thank you for joining me today on the Stellar Highway. My name is Motormind and I will be your guide. Well, I said I wouldn't do it, but I gotta be honest, it was killing me knowing that such a big thing was going on with Spider-Man and not reading it. Um, so I have a long history with Spider-Man and I mean, I've basically been reading it since like I was a kid, um, but I continued to read Amazing Spider-Man uh, through like high school and and, and uh, maybe dipped into it a little bit during college. I feel like I was just reading X-Men during college. Anyway, long story short, I, I came back to comics with Superior Spider-Man. I just, I heard about it. It was such a wild idea. I decided to check it out. In Superior Spider-Man, written by Dan Slott, who writes this book, this is his finale, basically has one more issue on Amazing Spider-Man to end like a decade-long run. Um, Superior Spider-Man, though, is largely responsible for getting me back into comics. Um, I really like Superior Spider-Man, and that's a topic for another video. But why is that relevant? Well... <laughs> Spoilers, you know, I, I'm not going to go full spoilers on this one because this is really great and you owe it to yourself to read it and I don't want to spoil it for anybody. Not entirely anyways, but I will entice you. I'll tell you a few little things about it that might pique your interest because I'm so glad I picked this up. Um, basically, this is, you know, more or less a self-contained story. I mean, if you know anything about anything, you know that... You know, Spider-Man has had all those symbiotes throughout the years, you know, so, you know, they had the original symbiote, you know, which became Venom, and then eventually they had, like, the red symbiote, which became Carnage. Well, the villain of this story is the Red Goblin, which, you know, Norman Osborn, Green Goblin, being Spider-Man's biggest, greatest foe, kind of merged with carnage so he became the red goblin he had all of his strengths none of his weaknesses good stuff like that spidey ends up calling in like some of his buddies like human torch and silk miles morales uh a character named clash who i don't know much about but also flash thompson as agent anti-ventum and <laughs> agent anti-venom the name doesn't really roll off the tongue but uh um so yeah, they, they kind of go all in and fight Norman as the Red Goblin. Nobody can really take him down, but Flash, with his anti-venom powers, can hurt him. So they kind of start to devise a plan to take him out. It leads Peter basically into a trap. Um, it's crazy. I mean, I really feel like the Red Goblin was a very real threat. I mean they're pretty good about putting Peter in danger, you know, throughout the years. But with the Red Goblin, it really felt like he was on the ropes. Like he was really in a bad spot and this dude was way powerful. But it wasn't like, um, it was still within his league, you know, and the Red Goblin won't be going toe to toe with Galactus or anybody like that anytime soon. But yeah, the sense of like danger and desperation and stuff in this book is very real. That was very cool. I appreciate it. There's lots of little nods to past Spider-Man history. Um, like, uh, you know, Peter does get to interact with the symbiote again briefly. Um, it's not really a focal point of the book. So if you, you know, don't run out and buy this because you heard he's in the black suit because you're going to be disappointed. It's not really a focal point of the issue, which is good because when it comes down to it, it's just, you know, Peter doing what he does best, just gritting his teeth, digging deep, finding that hidden reserve and like pulling out a win. Um, and in that regard, I mean, this is a pretty great story. This isn't a Spider-Man story that like is going to change your life or anything. But this is epic. It's cool. Uh, there's a lot to like in here. And I'm really glad I picked it up. Now, uh, I do want to say there is a death in this book. And you've probably heard that. Um, it's not like an earth-shattering loss for Peter. Uh, it's important. It's an important death. But it's not going to change the face of Spider-Man, you know, going forward. Um, this is a... Dan Slott, 
um, he did a good job of like kind of rearranging the toys for the next guy. So um, when Nick Spencer comes on this book at, I think, issue 802, um, Dan Slott has a final 801 kind of an epilogue. I expect it to be, you know, just a lot of wrapping up, loose ends. Um, you know, Dan Slott has put, a, put everything back in place so somebody can pick up and, you know, start building a new uh, Spider-Man legacy. Um, I don't know Nick Spencer's work outside the, you know, super recent stuff um and i've never actually read any of his stuff so i don't know what to expect from nick spencer i don't know what kind of a writer he is but uh it, it's very cool and it shows that he cares about spider-man i mean i guess you would after 10 years of writing it but puts kind of everything back in its place and also like kind of plants some seeds for some future stuff and for me the most exciting thing in this is there, there's a little bit of Dr. Octopus in there. And uh, apparently he's gone through a lot of changes and I'm not up on what's going on with Doc Ock after Superior Spider-Man. But the cool thing that this book does is set up uh, sort of a redemption for Dr. Octopus, not unlike the redemption he experienced at the end of Superior Spider-Man which was then undone by some time travel shenanigans. So this book sets up a redemption for Dr. Octopus, which ultimately kind of sets up the potential return, or you could just go on, go and say the return of superior Spider-Man is in this book. I mean, essentially I'm not banking on it because <laughs> Dan Slott won't be writing it anymore. And Unless I'm mistaken, Superior Spider-Man is Dan Slott's creation. Um, but this does have the return of Superior Spider-Man. And it's so cool. It's so exciting to me because I, I really enjoyed Superior Spider-Man. So it's neat to think he might be back. I've often thought that, you know, they could use him a little bit like Ben Riley or Kane or one of the other sort of spider characters as kind of like an occasional team up or something good like that. I just think there's so much to like and hate, but love to hate about Superior Spider-Man that it's such a shame that, you know, he got retired. Um, they have found little ways to pop him in here and there, like in Spider-Verse and stuff. And I really, I really appreciate that that's being done, but uh, it is super cool that this book is, it's just a great Spider-Man story, period. And it's very cool. Um, but for me personally, the idea that Superior could be coming back is really great. And again, I don't know if Jameson has always been this way, but Jameson really gets to shine in, in these books lately. Um, in Chip Zdarsky's Spectacular Spider-Man, Jameson gets some of the best lines. I mean, he may not get the best stuff to do. I mean, he's... He, he has no powers or whatever, but they they give him some of the best lines and stuff. And this book is no exception. I mean, he has a significant part in this. Uh, it's brief. Uh, no, it's not brief. It's kind of an ongoing, you know, pop in, try to help, try to fix, you know, things that he messed up. Um, but yeah, you know, Jameson's really great in this too. So if you're a fan of Jameson and who isn't, uh, you're going to love this book. But basically what, what this does, and, you know, I'm going to skip... 98% of the book and just show you this little bit here at the end um, regarding Superior Spider-Man since, you know, obviously that was a pretty big highlight for me. Pretty big unexpected surprise that I can comfortably share with you guys without feeling like I'm ruining the book. But, but basically, you know, there's a, a new hire at Horizon Labs. If you remember Horizon Labs, that's, that's where Peter worked for a time. But here we have kind of on the last page here, it seems like Otto has taken up sort of like an alias and uh, you know, gotten this kind of wild new haircut and stuff. And he's, you know, of course this is Anna Marie, I believe it's Anna Marie, or maybe it's just Anne Marie Marconi, who was his love interest during Superior Spider-Man. She's been with Horizon Labs and Parker Industry for a long time. Of course, she's, you know, recognizing him or at least 
beginning to recognize who he really is, but there we have just this little reveal here of, you know, I always strive to be superior. So, man, good stuff. I really, I'm really excited at the prospect of Superior Spider-Man coming back. But, uh, yeah, 80 pages, one story, no holds barred, like it says on the cover. Believe this thing is $9.99, but it's worth it. I mean, this is, this gave me the satisfaction of reading a trade paperback, which is usually, you know, 15 bucks. So, I mean, you know, for 10 bucks, I mean, maybe the paper quality and stuff isn't the greatest, Maybe the art is good about 70% of this book and then kind of tanks a little bit towards the end. But it's got it where it counts. Looks good where it needs to look good. All the fights, all the web swinging, all that stuff is really good and dynamic. With the epilogue and kind of the, the wind down of the story or the denouement or whatever you want to say, the art kind of tanks, but it's not as important as the words on the page. So again, this one's a, a recommend. I mean, you know, at $10, it might be kind of hard to buy in, but I think you're going to be satisfied if you like Spider-Man and you want to see kind of the end of a sort of a end of an era, if you will. So Amazing Spider-Man number 800. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Uh, click uh, subscribe, click the bell, all that good stuff. And thanks again for riding with me on the Stellar Highway.